So these many things you need to be noting down. Now let us get to the canonical representation of band pass filters. Okay, so with respect to complex envelope generated, how the it could be represented in a canonical form. For that we need to be knowing some points. That is, the complex envelope S negation of T, which is generated just now, is the equivalent low pass representation of the band pass signal S of T. Okay, it is the low pass representation. The S negation of T is the analytic. It is analytical. because its imaginary part is the hilbert transform of the real part that is whatever the imaginary part we get it would be the inverse transform of the real part generated okay so that's why s negation of t is defined as s i of t plus j into s q of t where s negation of t is the complex envelope s i of t is the in phase component and s q of t is the quadrature phase component so these two components generated that is s i and s q are mainly responsible for the canonical representation of band pass signals generated okay so these two components you need to be remembering it very carefully okay now the real part of the pre envelope is equal to the original band pass signal that is s of t is equal to real part of s plus of t so name this as equation a the complex envelope and pre envelope are related in such a way you see here how these two are related s negation of t is equal to S plus of t into e to the power minus j two pi of c t. So in this, this is the relationship between complex and pre envelope. In case if they ask this equation, you need to be mentioning it, mentioning it. Okay. So now bring uh, e to the power minus j two pi of c t to other side. So therefore, we will be getting S plus of t is equal to S negation of t divided by e to the power minus j two pi of c t. So one divided by e to the power minus we are having. So if you bring it to all uh, to the numerator, it will be e to the power plus. So that's why we will be getting. S plus of t is equal to S negation of t into e to the power j two pi f c t, where this is the complex envelope and this is the exponential component. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to do whatever this S plus of t it is generated that you put it in the equation A. That is put equation B in equation A. So we would be getting S of t is equal to real part of S of t into e to the power j two pi f c t. So S of t is equal to real part of S i of t. Plus J S Q of T. So because uh, S of T is initially defined as this term, right? So that I have substituted here into e to the power J theta is defined by cos theta plus J sine theta. So that only I have substituted here. That is cos two pi F C T plus J sine two pi F C T. So S of T equal to real part of S I of T and multiply it with cos two pi F C T plus J into S I of T plus sine two pi F C T plus J into S Q of T cos two pi F C T minus S Q of T into sine two pi F C T because we are having J into J. J into J is J square. J square is given by minus one, so that's why we are getting this negative sign here. Okay, so this indicates minus one here. So these many things are clear, right? Now, finally, we would be getting the term S of T as S I of T cos two pi F C T minus S Q of T sine two pi F C T. Okay, so this is the canonical representation with respect to in phase and quadrature phase component okay now we should be knowing the phasor representation of two components which is getting generated for the complex envelope sorry for the pre envelope so that is one is s as negation of t that is for complex envelope and one is for the exponential component how the phasor representation is done you see here it is done by plotting the plot of in phase and quadrature phase components sq and si with respect to that one uh, slope is drawn for the s negation of t that is the complex envelope and the magnitude part and phase part is written okay so the magnitude of this is uh, given with respect to these two terms that is s xi square plus sq square the whole root and the phase part is tan inverse of sq by si okay this is for the complex envelope and the phasor representation for the exponential component is given with respect to imaginary axis and real axis where the magnitude part is 1 and the phase part is 2 pi fc t okay so for the imaginary axis it is 1 and the real part it is also with respect to phase it is 2 pi fc t okay so the ro rotation would be taking place continuously that is rotate at the rate of 2 pi fc t so the rotation is taking place continuously and the slope is not constant and it would be changing at the rate of 2 pi f c t okay so this was for the exponential part now 
the phasor for s plus of t that is a pre envelope is obtained by multiplying the phasors of s cap of t and e to the power j 2 pi f c t because initially we have defined s plus of t as s cap of t into e to the power j 2 pi f c t right so that's why here we should be multiplying these two diagrams phasor representations in order to get the pre envelope okay so when now when two phasors are multiplied their lengths get uh, multiplied and their phasor gets added they mutually rotate at the rate of 2 pi f c t so from two diagrams the phasor representation we get the final phasor representation for the pre envelope in such a way that is you see here with respect to imaginary and real axis as well as sq and si okay the magnitude for this part with respect to the rotation is si square plus su it remains the same but there are two phases generated instantaneously with respect to the change in the uh, rotation that is one is tan inverse of sq by si along with that it, we are getting 2 pi fc fct so that's why the total phase variation we are getting that is tan inverse of sq by si into 2 pi fc okay so this is the total phase change with respect to the pre envelope form okay so these things for for the phase representation now let us get to the block diagram part for extracting these signals block diagram for extracting si of t and sq of t from s of t okay how it could be extracted so the extraction is done with one component which is common that is called as phase shifter okay so the phase shifter component would be getting extract would be getting extracted with, which gets passed through the low pass filter and the phase would be getting changed in such a way that we would be getting two components si of t and sq of t okay it is shown in this figure here so from s of t there are two components which are getting uh, uh, interchanged with respect to the phase shifter which is attached between these two components y1 of t and y2 of t okay so it is given through the low pass filter why because the low pass filtering is done where the frequency the which are allowed only those things are getting passed on and the components generated are in phase and quadrature phase components okay one is with respect to cos 2 pi fct and one is with respect to sin 2 pi fct twice why because the signal is getting uh, mutually indicated twice to each other okay so this is for block diagram for extracting these two now for the construction part from these two whatever is extracted from these in phase and quadrature phase component we need to be constructing the signal s of t okay for that again the negative phase shifter is used with respect to the phase change okay so here we are having pi by 2 minus phase shifter and here we are using minus pi by 2 minus phase shifter okay minus pi by 2 phase shifter so that's why we are getting the inverse phase shifter process here and we are extracting constructing back the signal s of t from the these two components okay now consider y1 of t here now y1 of t as s of t into 2 cos 2 pi f c t so y1 of t is equal to si of t cos 2 pi f c t minus sq of t sin 2 pi f c t so s of t in, in initially we have defined like this right so that we have substituted it here into 2 cos 2 pi f c t so again multiply it we will be getting this term here i will not read it again just uh, note it down so now here cos square 2 pi f c t we know that cos square theta can be written as 1 plus cos 2 theta divided by 2 so that's why we are getting here 4 pi f c t so here we could be cancelling 2 here here also uh, cos theta sin theta can be written as sin 2 theta divided by 2 so sin 2 theta minus 0 divided by 2 that is uh, sin theta itself so sin theta in this case is 0 so we are getting 0 here so 2 to gets cancelled here so we are left with sq of t into sin 4 pi f c t so here we are having si of t plus si of t cos 4 pi f c t minus sq of t sin 4 pi f c t so we know that 4 pi with respect to cos and sin it is a complete 360 degree so it would be nullified to 0 so these two components are getting cancelled out so we are left with y1 of t is equal to si of t with respect to the low pass filter frequencies whatever extract okay similarly for y2 of t also we are getting sq of t this is for the high pass filter so in this way with respect to the extraction we are getting two components for the signal pass that is in phase and quadrature phase component okay so in this way the signals are canonically represented with respect to each other okay 
so these many things you need to be writing under the complex envelope part and the canonical representation part hope it is clear so please note these points guys this notes if you want i'm going to be putting in the video's description go and access it and read these many points okay yeah so that's all for this video guys we'll see you in the next concept uh, in the next video till then thank you